What's up guys, Mizzo Frizzo from Pitchfork Academy here, and in this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a very basic twin stick shooter setup. So as you can see here, I can use the W, A, S, and D keys to run around, and if I right click, I'm going to aim and rotate my character uh, in the direction of wherever the cursor is on the level. Now I've added a few things to my game here, such as blend spaces and this cool little weapon with a laser sight, but I'm just going to be showing you the basic setup. So W, A, S, and D keys to run around, and then to rotate your character to wherever the mouse cursor is pointing. And guys, if this tutorial turns out to be of any use or value to you whatsoever, you can support what we do here at Pitchfork Academy by wishlisting our new game coming out April 16th called Skyblocker. We're very, very excited for this one. It's just going to be $10 and will be a great way to support us here at Pitchfork because if this game does well, then, well, I'm going to quit my day job and I'm going to be making a lot more tutorials for you guys. But without further ado, let me show you how to do this. Alrighty, now you might be tempted to start with a top-down template project, but I'm actually going to recommend starting with the third person content pack, uh, just because it'll be easier to set up the movement with the W, A, S, and D keys, because that's kind of already set up in the third person. So it's much easier to kind of convert the third person template into a twin stick shooter than I think the top down, uh, which is sort of more of a point and click setup. So with that in mind, I'm gonna create a new project using the third person template, leave everything as default, name it whatever you like, and hit create. And the first thing I'm going to do once the editor has fired up is open up my character's blueprint, which is in third person blueprints, BP third person character. And if you're using Unreal Engine 5.5 like me, you may have noticed that there is a slight difference here in the add input mapping section. Uh, there, they are no longer using event begin play. They're using event receive controller changed. Um, it doesn't matter too much. This will uh, still fire up when you, when you hit hit play, uh, but you may not have a reference to your player controller, which I believe in the older versions of the template, you did already have a preset uh, variable containing a reference to the player controller. But if you don't, you just want to drag off of as player controller here and promote this to a variable, we'll call this player controller. But as I said, if you already have this uh, set variable node with a reference to the player controller, then you don't need to worry about that. But you do want to make sure that you have one of these because what we are going to do next is set the control rotation uh, so that we're looking down on our character. So we're gonna drag off of player control here and set control rotation. I'm gonna plug in the execution pin and I'm going to split the struct pin on the rotation here. And I'm just going to set the pitch to something like 300. So this will be uh, the angle at which you look down on your character. I found that 300 is a pretty decent sort of top down angle, but you can always play with this number here to get a different angle. I'm also going to drag off of the player controller here and set show mouse cursor to true. Plug these in. And now all we need to do is come down to the camera input section here and disconnect the execution pins on the uh, input action look uh, nodes right here so that we can't actually use the mouse to look around uh, because we're sort of setting the angle here and then the mouse is just going to be our aiming. So if we hit play now, uh, oh, we do not have the top down angle. Um, that may be to do with this reference right here. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. So I'm, I'm just going to delete this received controller changed input and I'm going to replace it with the event begin play. And I'm also going to grab the object here and get player controller and we'll see if that has worked. Okay, and it's telling us that we don't need the cast, so we can probably just grab these, move them on to get player controller, 
we do not need the cast. Nice. Okay, that's worked. So now we have our sort of top down angle um, and we've got our mouse cursor here, but you'll also notice if we run down to a wall like so, uh, it's going to push our camera in. And if you're doing some sort of top down game, uh, you probably want to just hide stuff that's in front of, uh, but sort of between your character and your camera anyway. So what we can do is we can just go to our camera boom and we can uncheck do collision test in the details panel like so. And now our camera boom will not do a collision test. It will just stay where it is no matter what gets in the way. And I might also just increase the target arm length there to double, maybe something about 800. And now we've got, oh, that's maybe a bit too far, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it like so. Um, I'm not going to obviously go into a material that sort of makes the, uh, you know, reduces the opacity of stuff when you go behind it. Uh, we may cover that at some point in the future. But for now, we're just going to do the running around and looking. Okay, so the next thing will be to make our character rotate towards where the mouse cursor is. And we're going to do this on tick. So I'm going to find some empty space up here and find event tick. And on tick, what we're going to do is grab our player controller reference and get hit result under cursor by channel get hit result under cursor by channel. This is basically a trace down from the cursor. And then what we can do is drag off of the return value here and get a branch to make sure that this only fires if we actually hit something. And then I'm going to break this hit result, drop this down, and I'm gonna grab the location and promote it to a variable. And I'm gonna call it cached location plug this in here and then what I'm going to do is set our actors location set act sorry rotation set actor rotation and I'm going to interpolate this so I'm going to get an r interp to we can drag off of delta time and just get delta world get world delta seconds and the current is going to be our current actor rotation. So we can get our actor rotation and plug that into current. And then the target, we are going to find look at rotation. So we can drag off of here and find look at rotation. And we're going to right click on both of these pins and split them. I'm going to drag off of my cached location here and break vector and this vector is going to plug into uh, all of my target target x y and z and I'm also going to get actor location I'm going to split the struct pin and I'm just going to plug in the x and the y up here and then the start Z will be the Z from the break vector, like so. A little bit of spaghetti code, but that should be working. And now the character is just going to look wherever the cursor is pointing. And if you want to make a twin stick shooter where you only have one walk speed and you're basically always looking where you're going to fire, uh, then this setup might be absolutely fine for you. You can just add a blend space for the locomotion. It will look a lot nicer you know, start working on animating the arms and adding weapons and firing the weapons. But I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks to sort of refine this a little bit. The first thing I'm going to look at is basically um, when I move the cursor over here and I'm no longer pointing at any objects that the trace can hit, I no longer get my character turning which is a bit of a problem. And also if I, for example, remove this wall so that I can get a little bit closer down here, um, what you'll also notice is that when I, when I move the cursor around corners, you'll see my character's 
rotation isn't smooth in one direction. So I can move my cursor down here and my character starts rotating downwards. But then when I get to the corner, you see they start rotating upwards a little bit. And it's not, it's not really intuitive for the player to, to think about that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you something that fixes this issue where the cursor moves over here. And also it will make just everything a hell of a lot smoother. And the first thing we're going to need is a custom trace channel for our cursor trace. So we're going to go to edit and project settings and we'll search for trace. And then right here under trace channels, let's add a new trace channel and let's just call it cursor. And actually the default response I'm going to change to ignore because I don't want uh, really anything to block this trace channel apart from uh, what I want to block it with. So I'm going to hit accept, make ignore the default response. And then right here in my uh, get hit result under cursor by channel, I might need to right click this and refresh nodes. And then the trace channel, I can choose trace channel cursor. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a blocking volume. So I'm going to click the cube plus icon up here and go to volumes and find blocking volume. I'm going to drag this into the level. I'm going to drop it down. So it is basically level with the floor like so. And then I am going to scale it up on the X and the Y till it is, you know, sort of more than big enough for my purposes. So it depends on what kind of level you've got, uh, but this is just a volume. You can make them pretty big. And now with the volume selected, I'm going to find collision in the details panel. I'm going to change the collision preset to custom, and I'm going to make this block the cursor channel. And I can set it to ignore everything else. It's really just for my cursor trace. So as long as it's blocking the cursor, that's all that really matters to me. And now it uh, doesn't matter where I go. My character will always face the cursor and it will always be smooth no matter what objects get in the way. Nice. Now, if you wanted to make your character sort of um, run in the know, turn in the direction they're running and only look at the cursor when they're aiming, then adding that sort of thing is super, super simple. If I find some empty space down here and I find the right mouse button, for example, and I create a variable, let's call it aiming question mark, compile, alt click and drag this out and duplicate it, set it to true on pressed and false on release, then what I can do is before my trace and rotation stuff on event tick here, I can get my aiming um, variable. I can hold B and click to get a branch, plug this in, plug this in here, whoops. And now this will only execute when I'm holding the right mouse button. And otherwise my character will run around like so. And then if I right click, they're going to face the mouse cursor like so. They're snapping around very fast there. What did I set the interp speed? Oh, I set interp speed to zero. Uh, my mistake. So on your rotation logic here, you do want to set your interp speed. And I found that an, an interp speed of about 7.5 to be pretty good. Uh, depends on your game and how much you want them to sort of um, turn around. We've also got a problem here where orient, orient ro rotation to movement is fighting with the uh, rotation speed there. Basically, what we can do is just switch that off. So if this is the kind of setup that you want where you're running around like this and then you right click and you want them to face the cursor, then you most certainly want to change your orient uh, rotation to movement. So we can grab the character movement component here and we can set orient rotation to movement to false. And then we'll set it back to true when we release. And while we're here, we may as well set the max walk speed as well. 
if that's something that uh, you know you want for your game. For my game, uh, it totally makes sense, but in your game, you may not want them to slow down when you're aiming. So I'm going to set this down to something like 150 when I'm aiming, and I'll set it back to the default, which is 500 uh, when I'm not aiming. So now when I right click, they'll slow down and they'll face the cursor like so. And the rotation uh, speed, because of that change to the uh, interpolation speed, is now pretty smooth, pretty good. And that's all looking pretty nice. And that's pretty much it, guys. If this tutorial has been of any use or value to you whatsoever, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.